What is going on guys? It is Parker here. This is going to be a very exciting video. As you can see, we've got a bunch of subs sitting back here. These are all subs that are right under that $200 mark. So we're going to be going over what is the best sub that you can get for under 200 bucks. Now of course there's a lot of other options out there, but these have been for the most of the highest requested subs for me to review. So we're going to go over which of them I think is the best. Stay tuned. Alright guys, we have a bunch of subs here, a bunch of money invested into these things for the channel, for y'all. So let's quickly go over what we got. We have the NVX VCW, we have the SCAR EVL, we have the Audio Pipe TTX BDC4, and then we have the American Bass XFL, and this is the new updated version that came out pretty recently. Four really, really great subs. Well, let's go over first just kind of what all of them have. They are all rated at a thousand or more RMS. They all have cast aluminum baskets. They all have three inch voice coils. So yeah, that's really what they all have. That is the exact same. I'll take a quick look. I have a little kind of cheat sheet here. Uh, let's see, those are their RMS ratings right there. Now that being said, I think all of these are probably underrated. They all have three inch voice coils. Um, however, this one has a copper voice coil. Those are all their FS's. Those are the motor weights for all of them. We have the sensitivity, X Max, and then the warranty. Okie dokie. Well, let's go over them all individually, starting with the NVX VCW. Most everybody seems to like this sub, and this just seems to be a great all-around sub just from using it and looking at it maybe not the highest SPL uh, geared sub but I don't think that's what they're really going for this seems to be a great basically quality sub that'll get loud and handle a lot of power so we're just gonna take a quick look at it of course we got a dust cap we have of course a paper cone and it's got it's reinforced with some sort of weave nice surround we have the dual tinsel leads and then we have a 195 ounce motor okay so good things about this we have three inch voice coil uh, bad thing there's not a ton of venting for it there's little vents under there and then there's like the center vent but there's no additional vents around the bottom of the motor this has the softest cone which I believe is better for sound quality of uh, you know for more of a variety in the in the uh, Hertz spectrum but when you're getting really really loud it might be more apt to distort but still I mean it still isn't bad but it definitely definitely is softer than the others and then the surround it's a pretty beefy surround but it doesn't it's not really a high roll surround like the others Still pretty beefy. Great, great, great basket. Really like it. We have nice uh, terminals. However, they're pretty small. You really can't, you could probably fit 10 gauge in there if you really tried. That's a closer, yeah, you could probably fit 10 gauge in there. And then the lead, the tinsel leads are, I mean, they're good, but they are a little on the smaller side. And then we have just a massive motor. I believe it's a triple stack. It could be a double, but I think it's, it's a triple. Anyway, really, really nice sub. Um, I played this thing, it got really loud. It's a dual four ohm, and then my single box turned to 32 hertz. I still got a 140 something. I'll play a video of that. Did really well. It sounded, again, it just sounded super, super clean. Was overall very impressed. And for testing, I used a SCAR RP2000 on all these subs. So yeah, I'm going to play a few clips of it playing just so y'all can hear it, and then we'll get on to the next one.
next in line, we have the Scar EBL. This is their $199 sub. This is the most expensive sub out of the four, except for the BDC four. Sometimes they kind of float anywhere from 170 to 210, depending on when and where you find them. But yeah, we have a really big center cap. Don't know if that makes a difference or not, but it's really big. Very, very stiff cone. Really nice high roll surround. Uh, of course, they all have double stitching. We have our cast aluminum baskets. With the cool looking red spider. Now this one only has single leads, single tinsel leads, but they're really thick. Probably won't be able to catch it on video, but that's really thick. Whereas the two leads over here are a lot thinner. So I'd say they're probably about the same. Um, I kind of like having two of the two though, personally. Uh, now what is nice over here, and where I think this one wins, is the push terminals. You could fit, you could definitely fit big old eight gauge wire in there. Maybe even six. Big old terminals, which is just, I don't know, just nice, makes it easy. Again, you could, you know, run two, I would say you could probably run two eight gauge strands into there if you're running it in series or parallel or whatever will make your life pretty easy um we have a nice three inch black uh black aluminum voice coil it's got the black glue on it so it should be able to withstand a ton of heat so very nice there the only downside to this sub as compared to all these subs is the motor this only has a 166 ounce motor well as all, all of these are about at that 200 ounce range so yeah that's really the only place this one seems to fall short as opposed to the rest and also what I did notice after playing it even though this is really stiff it got some little like kind of dimples in it and you probably can't really see them and they just seem to be like kind of stretch marks where it's a little softer. So that seems kind of odd, but oh well, it still sounds just fine and got, you know, got the job done. Now we have the audio pipe, BDC4, very highly requested sub, and one of my favorites from all the subs that I've had. Really, really nice high roll surround. This is definitely the widest one out of all of these. Uh, it just it looks really impressive, and this does have 25 millimeters of X Max, so that is the most out of all of these. And then this also has definitely the stiffest cone. This cone is ridiculously stiff. Stupid stiff cone. There's no center cap to worry about being flimsy. Just one stupid stiff cone. And then we've got this really nice cast aluminum basket. It's got kind of a cool texture to it. And what I also liked about this one is it kind of slips in a little bit. So you can fit this into pretty much any hole. I actually originally cut my box out for this sub. So when I went to the scar, I had to cut it out a little bigger to fit the scar in there. And then when I put the American base out, I had to even cut it bigger. So, yeah, this will fit in pretty much any box a little easier than some other subs. Um, so the first downside to this sub is it has, it does have a 3-inch coil, but it is a copper coil as opposed to the black aluminum coils. So generally the copper coils will not withstand as much heat as the black glue-coated aluminum ones will. But this thing still did flawlessly. Um, I really never smelled it, and it was just a great sub. Now, this does have a 220-ounce motor, which is really, really awesome. And then 
the other, it's kind of an upside and a downside. Uh, we have these the really cool patented or patent pending terminals that these things use. We have the two over here and the four over here. So you can easily run them in series or parallel. Just makes your life easier. That being said, I think they need to just design this a little bit better. These things are flimsy. The Allen wrench that, that, that they give you is a teeny bit, like kind of small for them. And like they really, when, when you're screwing them in, it just feels kind of cheap. So overall, not stoked on that. I, I honestly just like good old push terminals. Just makes your job quick and easy. I'm not gonna say it's bad, but I think they could improve the quality of those. And then this just has a single tint of leads, but they are the flat ones, which I think are really nice. I mean, there's a ton of wire there. So these things can take a ton of heat. Definitely really great tinsel leads. So yeah, really, really great sub. Okie okay, dokie, last but certainly not least, we have the American Base XFL. This is their new updated version. Very impressive sub. Definitely the biggest sub out of all of them, tallest. They're definitely the most impressive looking out of all of them. So yeah, let's take a look at this. To start out with, we have this really awesome ribbed high roll surround. A lot of people seem to love this thing. It's very very cool and we have a pretty stiff cone not as stiff as the bdc 4s but it's still pretty stiff same with the dust cap very nice stiff dust cap and then we have a really great cast aluminum basket tons and tons of venting really really like that we have big old double spiders you guys can see where they have the different plates for each spider so that's really cool like this one's all the way down here this one's all the way up here so yeah really like that Horse three inch voice coil with the black aluminum. Now this one's really cool. It's got kind of a matte color on that coil and it's incredibly consistent. There you go. Just everyone is incredibly consistent and all looks the exact same. Whereas if you come over here to the scar, it's got more of the shiny glue and you can see all the little like bubbles it looks like and stuff in it. So. Again, in my opinion, I mean, this just looks just looks neater and more thought out and better. Again, I don't know if one is technically better than the other, and they both perform flawlessly for me, so I can't complain about them, but yeah, just something to note. And then we have a big old 120 ounce magnet or motor on this as well. So very, very impressive. All right, so the really only, at least downside to me, that I see would be these direct leads. Now there's nothing wrong with them and a lot of people like that and that's totally fine. But for me personally, it just makes it a little extra hassle when you're switching out subs a lot. And these kind of stick out. So when you're getting them in the box, they rub. And it's just, again, just not as easy as I would like it to be personally, but isn't bad. And then we have the dual tinsel leads. And these ones are pretty thick. They're definitely thicker than the ones that we have in here. So yeah guys, that is the American Base XFL.
guys, well, that is all four subs. Now, I would say they all, again, I think this one might have had the best overall quality of sound. Whereas these three, I mean, you really get these if you're just trying to get loud. Um, that being said, all three of them got pretty low. They sounded really good in my box. My box is 2.7 cubic feet and it's tuned to 32 hertz. And all these things got really, really low. I'd play music anywhere from 25 hertz and up. And they all sounded really, really good. This one around 35 hertz is where I got the peak um, SBL volume on my meter. Whereas both of these, I think I got peak at about 40 hertz. Again, with the way the box was tuned. So, yeah. Again, they all were in the 140s. I think all of them I got up to about 142 some, something. With the box being port, you know tuned to 32 hertz. I think again, I got higher tuning the box higher, but but as a direct comparison, I tested all of them at 32 hertz. Okay, so my opinion overall, again, I'm going to say the American bass was my personal favorite. Everything on it is just excellent. The build quality is just excellent, and it, in my opinion, it sounded about the best, maybe next to the BDC4. Um, again, it's kind of hard to tell, though, when you're testing so many different stuff, but in my opinion, they did seem to sound the best. Anyway, guys, there you have it. So yeah, again, American Bass would be my personal favorite, but they all are honestly really, really good subs. They all seem to handle power really, really well, seem to handle over their rated power. Even if I'm getting impedance rise of two or three ohms, still going to be above that thousand watt range or right in there somewhere. So yeah, awesome, awesome subs.